Hello boys and girls, we got another video for you fine folks on the internet. Uh, another installment in the Matthew Buckley Talks music series here today. Uh, looking at another fine album of surf and hot rod music from the early 1960s. Uh, today we are looking at Little Deuce Coop by the Beach Boys. Originally issued in October of 1963 on Capitol Records. Uh, on vinyl in U.S., Germany, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Brazil, South Africa. Uh, also concurrently issued on Reel to Reel, uh, three, uh, three and three quarter inch two track mono tape. <clears throat> and then uh, the next year, 1964, it was reissued uh, on red vinyl for Japanese markets, which I find particularly fascinating. Uh, the next year, in 1965, there was a mono and stereo vinyl reissue for UK markets. And in 1966, there was a German stereo vinyl reissue. <clears throat> Pardon me, I just need a sip of tea here. <clears throat> and in uh, 1967, there was a play tape EP. I was not even familiar with that format until doing the research for this uh, video. But the album was issued as a four-track play tape EP, uh, only featuring the tracks Little Deuce Coop, Car Crazy Cutie, Shutdown, and Spirit of America, which I find very interesting that that's a thing. Um, <clears throat> and it was a few years until there was another reissue. In 1971, there, uh, uh, there was a stereo vinyl reissue, and then again in 73, another stereo vinyl reissue. Uh, and then in 1976, the album was reissued on both mono and stereo uh, on vinyl for uh, U.S. markets. The next year, in 1977, there was a Japanese vinyl reissue. And a few years later, in 1980, uh, the first cassette reissues uh, were produced for both U.S. and Canadian markets, alongside vinyl reissues. And in 1981... There was uh, another UK vinyl reissue. And then five years later, in 1986, there was actually a remaster uh, for a subsequent UK cassette and vinyl reissue. Um, in 1989, the album saw its first CD reissues uh, for both Canadian and Japanese markets. The Japanese CD issued as part of the, their Past Masters series. I love how they have so many of these series and Japanese reissues. Uh, in 1992, uh, CEMA Special Markets produced a Canadian CD re reissue. And uh, the same group produced a uh, U.S. Clear cassette reissue. Um, in 1994, the album saw its first U.S. CD reissue. And uh, that same year, there was also a mono vinyl reissue for U.S. markets. In 1997, uh, there was another Japanese CD reissue as part of their Cool Price series. Um, and the next year, uh, they produced another reissue, this time as a, a paper sleeve. Um, and in 2001... Uh, there was a Japanese mono and stereo HD CD remaster um, of the album with a bonus track of Be True to Your School, the single version, tacked on as a bonus track. <clears throat> uh, in 2012, uh, the Japanese produced another HD CD reissue, this time strictly the mono mix of the album. And uh, that same year... Uh, for U.S., European, and Australian markets, there was a remastered, reissued HD CD with both mono and stereo uh, mixes of the album. And in 2014, Capitol Records, in collaboration with Analog Productions, produced a 200-gram um, mono uh, reissue of the vinyl for U.S. markets. And that same year, uh, Universal Music Special Markets, in collaboration with uh, Analog Productions, produced a mono-stereo hybrid super audio CD uh, remaster of the album, which uh, I've read sounds fantastic. Um, 
And in 2015, Rumble Records produced a stereo vinyl reissue of the album for European markets. Um, and that same year, Capitol Records and Analog Productions produced a stereo mix of the 200 gram vinyl reissue of the album. Um, in 2016, DOL Records produced a mono and stereo uh, vinyl reissue of the album for European markets. I think actually, since rather clever, since the album is pretty short as it is, you can fit the entire album on one side. So they have the mono mix of the entire album on one side and the stereo mix of the entire album on, on the other side. And the next year, uh, in collaboration with Vinology, the same group produced a picture disc with the same idea of the mono on one side and the stereo on the other. So there's definitely quite an extensive reissue history of this album. A little bit of a Spark Notes uh, background. I've already uh, spoke a, a bit more length about the background of the Beach Boys themselves in uh, my video, uh, I believe it was the Beach Boys Greatest Hits uh, Volume 3 uh, review, so check that out if you want a little more background on the boys. Um, but on this album itself, it's the fourth full-length studio album by the Beach Boys, uh, recorded concurrently with their previous album, Surfer Girl, uh, which was only released three weeks prior to this album. Um, and this one peaked at number four on the U.S. Billboard album charts and has been certified platinum by the RIAA. In some regards, the album was produced in response to a Capitol Records compilation album titled Shutdown, which featured, among other surf and hot rod songs, um, a, a few Beach Boys songs. Uh, so... Brian got to work and said, well, we'll make our own uh, album about cars since, you know, all the songs on the Shutdown album were themed pretty much about cars. Um, and in some ways, these are among the earliest examples of concept albums in popular music. You know, it's, it's certainly not uh, Sgt. Pepper or anything, but still, it's, you know, a collection of songs about cars. It's got a theme. It's a concept album. So... Side A of this concept album opens with the title track, written by Brian Wilson and his chief collaborator for most of the album, California DJ Roger Christian. Uh, Christian often collaborated with Brian Wilson early in the Beach Boys career, and more frequently collaborated with Jan Barry on a handful of classic Jan and Dean songs, as I spoke about in my previous album review of Jan and Dean's The Little Old Lady from Pasadena. Uh, the Little Deuce Coop track was first issued a few months ahead of the album in July 1963 as the B-side of the group's fifth single, uh, and became their highest charting B-side, peaking at number 15 on the Billboard Hot 100. Uh, the song was subsequently issued on both the Surfer Girl album and the Little Deuce Coop album. Um, Brian has since gone on record claiming this to be one of his personal favorite car-themed Beach Boy tracks. The song is uh, even actually given honorable mention in the real Frank Zappa book, in uh, which Zappa writes one of the most exciting things that ever happened in the world of white person music uh, was when the Beach Boys used the progression uh, fifth to second on Little Deuce Coop, an important step forward by going backward. That makes me smile. Uh, the track was one of the last recorded prior to original guitarist David Marks leaving the band and being replaced by other original guitarist Al Jardine. There's a complicated history with Al leaving the band and rejoining and Marks leaving. The timeline is somewhat murky, but... The session features David Marks on rhythm guitar, Brian Wilson on bass guitar, piano, and vocals, Carl Wilson on lead guitar and vocals, Dennis Wilson on drums and vocals, and Mike Love on lead vocals. Uh, this was also significant as the first Beach Boys recording session in which Brian served as the official session producer. The uh, lyrics are typical of early era Beach Boy tracks with swagger and braggadocio behind Mike's vocal, just bragging about his hot rod car and how he can beat anybody in a drag race. <sighs> Sip of tea for the working man. The next track, Ballad of Old Betsy, 
Old Betsy, pardon me, uh, is to me a funny track. It's not meant to be. It's a ballad about a car, but there's something about it. You know, maybe it's the lyric, Betsy took some beatings but never once complained, or something like that. But uh, anyway, once again, written by Brian and Roger Christian. Uh, this album cut features Brian on lead vocals, bolstered by those classic lush Beach Boy harmonies. Their vocals are, are, are like a sweet syrup. I love it. Perhaps a somewhat cheesy dedication to a car, but definitely one of the sweetest cuts on the album and one of the most delicate arrangements. A definite highlight. The next track, Be True to Your School, was written by Brian Wilson and Mike Love. A youth anthem for the ages. Interestingly enough, even though the song is written in tribute to Hawthorne High School, which the Wilson brothers attended as teenagers uh, in California, the song uses the melody of the University of Wisconsin's fight song on Wisconsin. As a resident of Wisconsin, that always gets me. Uh, Another interesting fact is that the song was recorded during a brief overlap in which Al Jardine had returned to the group but David Marks had not yet left, making for a six-piece band. The recording session featured Brian on backing vocals, piano, and organ, Carl on lead guitar and backing vocals, Dennis on drums and backing vocals, Al Jardine on bass guitar and backing vocals, David Marks on rhythm guitar, and Mike Love on lead vocals. Uh, After the album's release, Brian decided to re-record the song for a 45 RPM single release even going so far as to record the song in a lower key and at a faster tempo. And for the new version, Brian would uh, add more backing vocals, hand claps, as well as saxophone and extra percussion, and even uh, guest cheerleader chants from the Honeys, a surf and pop group consisting of his wife Marilyn Wilson, her sister Diane Ravel, and their cousin Ginger Blake. This newly recorded version would be issued as the band's sixth single at the end of October 1963, charting at number six on the U.S. Billboard charts. In both versions, Brian and the boys successfully captured the essence of youthful, totally amped energy. Every time I hear Mike singing about being jacked up at the football game, it puts a smile on my face. Uh, The next track, Car Crazy Cutie, was another Brian Wilson, Roger uh, Roger Christian, pardon me, uh, collaboration with uh, Brian taking lead vocal. The song actually evolved from an early Brian composition, Pamela Jean, originally recorded and produced by Brian as a 45 RPM single for Capitol Records under the pseudonym of The Survivors. Um, But uh, the song features a strong a cappella introduction uh, which is reprised before the fade out, and great the uh, do Ron Ron backing vocals. You know, I I don't know if uh, you know the I don't think the Crystals the do Ron Ron had come out yet, so uh, I, I I hesitate to say thanks, Phil Spector, but it's that same kind of vocal thing. It's great. Uh, the narration tells us of the singer's steady little doll uh, and how she's not like other girls, uh, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, Because she doesn't worry about traditional standards of beauty and wants to spend her time working on cars, cruising the streets in her car, and watching drag races. It's good stuff, and uh, it's got, uh, you know, an ending with kind of a twist, you know. Like, you might think she's a dream gal, but she's more of a pal. Uh, You know, one of those kind of situations. It's a good song. I like it a lot. The vocals make it. And the following track, Cherry Cherry Coop, is also a Brian Wilson Roger Christian collaboration, this time with Mike Love on lead vocal. Another song just oozing with masculine braggadocio as uh, Mike sings about his dragster, about its chrome reversed rims and shaved door handles. Uh, according to the lyrics, the car can turn a quarter mile in less than two minutes, specifically 106. So that's pretty damn fast. Uh, There are layers of harmony vocal parts between the verses. It's a a simple arrangement, but Brian does a lot with it. This was also uh, reworked from an earlier Brian composition, Land Ahoy, which was an outtake from the sessions for the group's first album. 
Uh, and the next track, uh, 409, was uh, written by Brian Wilson and Mike Love, along with Gary Usher, a California musician, songwriter, and record producer who worked for and with several surf and hot rod musical groups and film projects. Uh, the song is often credited as the first big hot rod single. Uh, the Beach Boys definitely, uh, pardon the pun, got a lot of mileage out of the song. It was first issued as the B-side of the group's second 45 RPM single in June of 1962, subsequently uh, included on the Surf and Safari album the following October, and then issued again on the Little Deuce Coop album here a year later, a full year later. Uh, each release simply reissued the original track, making this the oldest recording on this album. Again, featuring a five-piece lineup without Al Jardine. We have David Marks on rhythm guitar and backing vocals, Carl on lead guitar and backing vocals, Brian on bass guitar and backing vocals, Dennis on drums and backing vocals, and Mike Love on lead vocal. A song like this is, in my opinion, always where Mike shines. He delivers the sort of you know, punchy tongue twister vocals real well. My four speed dual quad pause attraction 409. You know, he's, he's got it. And side A. And side B opens with Shutdown, another Brian Wilson, Roger Christian composition, initially issued as the B side of the group's fourth 45 RPM single in early March 1963 subsequently included on the Beach Boys' Surfin' USA album three weeks later, in late March, issued again as the title track of the Capitol Records' Various Artists' album, Shut Down in June, and once again included on this album the following October. So that's four separate releases of the same track over seven months. The track itself features Brian on bass guitar and harmony vocals, Carl on lead guitar and harmony vocals, Dennis on drums and harmony vocals, David Marks on rhythm guitar plus extra lead guitar lines during the fade out, and Mike Love not only on lead vocal, but also saxophone. Uh, the song lyrics are apparently only part of a longer poem by Roger Christian, and tell the story of a drag race between the narrator in a 1963 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray and his adversary in a super stock 1962 Dodge Dart. Not exactly a tale as old as time, but it makes for a fun story. And every time I hear the boys sing, gotta be cool now, power shift, here we go, it, I, I just have to smile. Uh, the next track, Spirit of America, was also written by Brian Wilson and Roger Christian. Originally conceived and written as a tribute to Craig Breedlove's series of record-breaking turbojet engines of the same name. Turbojet engine cars, I should say. Um, through rich vocal harmonies, Breedlove is name-checked and his 407 mile an hour exploits heralded. The vocals are the centerpiece of the track and in some ways it sounds a lot like doo-wop, but somehow more advanced. Um, it's worth noting that Roger Christian also co-wrote a song with Gary Usher for one of his groups, The Superstocks, uh, Ballad of Bonneville, on their Thunder Road album, which covers the exact same subject of Craig Breedlove and his record-setting turbojet engine cars. I find that very interesting. Uh, the next track, Our Car Club, was written by Brian Wilson and Mike Love with the duo splitting lead vocal duties in a very creative way. I like it. Uh, it was originally issued on the group's third album, Surfer Girl, uh, released the previous month uh, to this album. Uh, and this is, you know, a real fun, kind of silly song about a gang of guys who cruise around the streets in their hot rod cars and have been thinking of making a car club for only the finest cars with class and style. They sing about how they already have a deuce coupe, a stingray, uh, a rail job, which is probably a Volkswagen, and an XKE Jaguar. They sing about setting meetings, finding a corporate sponsor, collecting dues from new members, and producing club jackets. They even sing about getting the roughest and toughest initiation they can find for anyone who wants to join the club. It's, you know, the 
kind of silly adolescent fun I can imagine I, I would have uh, been all about if I was, uh, you know, listening to this in 1963 as a, you know, 16, 17 year old just getting behind the wheel. Another sip there, pardon me. The next track, No Go Showboat, is another Brian Wilson, Roger Christian collaboration uh, featuring lead vocals from both Brian and Mike. Uh, this is another fun, very silly song about a, a car that the narrator tells us in the first verse is just for looks, man, not for drags. He tells us his buddies dig the car, and the chicks really flip for that metal flake paint. Um, but uh, in the third verse, he admits that everybody takes me, even old Ford Woodies, and concludes, when it comes to speed, man, I'm just out of luck. I'm even shut down by the ice cream truck. That's some good stuff. If the punchline were more a focal point of the song, this could honestly be a Jan and Dean track. And uh, the following track, A Young Man Is Gone, uh, is actually the only track on the entire album not co-written in some form by Brian Wilson, but uh, is actually a lyrical revision by Mike Love to a song by jazz pianist Bobby Troop. Uh, the Beach Boys would often perform Their Hearts Were Full of Spring, uh, in their early days, and at some point, Mike Love devised a new set of lyrics as a sort of James Dean tribute. Both versions of the song would be delivered a cappella, leaving us with the bare, unadorned voices of the Beach Boys. Truly an album highlight, and an all-time favorite of mine. I definitely remember when I was first getting into the band, this was probably the song on this album that affected me the most as a kid. And the uh, next track, Custom Machine, is another product of the Brian Wilson, Mike Love songwriting team, with uh, Mike commanding lead vocals. He sings about a car he's been working on, from the grill, to the bucket seats, to the stereophonic speaker set, to magnesium spokes. An upbeat note to end the album, even if it is kind of a flippant song. And uh, with that note, we end side B. So, after a sip of tea here. <sighs> Some final thoughts. This is a fantastic album from the Beach Boys, and definitely what could, should be considered their classic run. During a period in which their star was still rising, and Brian Wilson was still evolving as a songwriter, and arranger, and producer, day by day in exponential leaps and bounds. And in spite of retooling three songs into new tracks and outright reusing four uh, previously released tracks, um, there's no sense of creative misdirection. The revisited songs are the backbone of the album concept, and the newly written songs not only expand that concept, but allowed for Brian to experiment with new arrangements and develop new ideas. Plus, it's always fascinating how Roger Christian's real-life interest in automobiles and that sort of drag and hot rod culture allowed for the Beach Boys to have such authentic vocabulary for all of these hot rod-themed songs. The listener is immersed in a world of dragster and hot rod jargon track after track, and it almost builds its own conceptual continuity as you hear references time and time again to riding the clutch or, you know, getting shut down and power shifts and, and all the Mike Love tongue twisters peppered along the way. Uh, the album also stands out, it's worth noting, as the last time original guitarist David Marks would be officially included uh, until the 50th anniversary reunion album in 2012. So there's a lot that makes this album special. A uh, closer look here at the cover, you get uh, a very nice shot of the little deuce coupe itself and uh this fella here uh working on the engine get the tracks all listed it's you know a very very nice pleasing design here uh back cover you get a uh, picture of the boys standing in front of a car you get uh you know another picture of the car some promos for the other uh three albums they've got at this point a uh, little uh, liner notes and track info. Nothing uh, too wild. It's uh, 
Just, you know, I, I love the liner notes you always get with these early 60s albums where it's it's a very almost, uh, I don't know, tone-deaf advertisement for the album. Like, they got somebody who doesn't know anything about the band half the time to write them. But uh, anyway, here's the record itself uh, on the rainbow capital logo. Nothing too crazy to write home about there either. And this is the mono copy. This is the uh, initial U.S. mono Scranton press. I also have the album on stereo as well, an original uh, 1963 Scranton press. Uh, so it's you know cool to have it on both mono and stereo formats. And also it's you know got the uh, capital picture sleeve there for anyone interested. But yeah, even though. This uh, definitely is uh, far from the peak of the Beach Boys. This album is a fun listen. <laughs> I love to hear how it says file under not only the Beach Boys. Oh god, will I be able to get it to the camera? Probably can't read it, it's probably too blurry, but it says file under the Beach Boys. Hot Rod Music, Vocal Group. That's good. Um, but yeah, this is a classic album. Always a fun listen. I would not hesitate to rate it. 8 out of 10, honestly. Um, part of me wants to say 7 because, you know, that would uh, give more of a ceiling for the Beach Boys, but this album really does kick it. Oh, uh, gosh. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just say 8 out of 10. Solid 8 out of 10 for a little Deuce Coop. The Beach Boys done good on this one. Um, so let me know uh, in the comments below. Uh, have you heard the Little Deuce Coop album? Uh, are you... I would... I hope you're familiar with the Beach Boys since I've already talked about them a little bit in previous videos. But uh, let me know in the comments down below uh, what you gotta say. Um, I appreciate any and all viewership and uh, keep tuning in because I'll keep them coming at you. This has been Matthew Buckley Talks Music with Little Deuce Coop by the Beach Boys. Music is the best. <laughs>